I am Dr. Juriens at Grady Veterinary Hospital, and today we'll be talking about chocolate toxicity in dogs. Now, most of us have heard at one time or another that chocolate's bad for dogs, but why is that exactly? And it's actually because um, chocolate co contains something called theobromine, which our bodies um, have no problem metabolizing, but um, dogs actually can't really break that down or use it. So that, along with actually the, the caffeine in chocolate, is uh, the reason why we see um, this toxicity in dogs that eat it. Um, now, if your dog were to get into chocolate, there's kind of two key pieces of information we'd like to see. Um, the first would be how much chocolate they've gotten into. And this is most helpful to have um, in ounces, uh, if you can. It gets a little complicated when we have kind of combination products, things like chocolate-covered fruits or, or processed foods like Oreos, but we do a little bit of guesswork. Um, and then the second piece of information is actually what type of chocolate. And this is important because um, different types of chocolate actually contain very different amounts of theobromine. And so um, milk chocolate is actually the best for your dog to get into if it were to get into chocolate because it contains the smallest amount of theobromine per ounce. Um, dark chocolate's a little bit worse than that. And then worst of all is actually um, cocoa. So baker's chocolate and then especially cocoa powder. Those are the worst. Okay, so just for an example, um, if we had a 30 pound dog, um, how much chocolate would it have to get into to potentially see life-threatening clinical signs? Um, and so in terms of milk chocolate, um, a 30 pound dog would have to get into about 10 ounces of chocolate here. If, we're, if it were to get into dark chocolate, um, we would actually only need about four ounces of that to see potentially life-threatening clinical signs. And um, Baker's chocolate, or essentially cocoa, um, we would only need about a little bit more than an ounce, about uh, an ounce and a quarter to see similar signs. So as you can see, the type of chocolate really does make a difference. So after we figure out that your dog has gotten into chocolate, our first step is to do decontamination. And that involves, first of all, um, actually making them vomit. And um, this is most useful within about two hours of ingestion. But um, chocolate tends to form a lump in the stomach, and making them vomit can only actually get out about 80% of the stomach contents. And so after we make them vomit, we give them a dose of activated charcoal, which helps bind to that chocolate and helps the body from absorbing more. So if your dog were to get into kind of a mild or moderate amount, um, that might be all we do, and we might send them home um, for you to, to watch for the mild clinical signs we might expect, which would be uh, gastrointestinal signs, such as vomiting or diarrhea. But if your dog gets into kind of the mo moderate to severe uh, range of chocolate, then we will likely recommend hospitalization, and that's for a couple different reasons. The first is actually to give repeated doses of activated charcoal, which um, is important because chocolate is kind of recirculated through the body, it goes through the liver, and then it's kind of dumped back into the digestive system, and it kind of recirculates back. And so repeated doses of activated charcoal help to kind of limit the amount of recirculation and absorption. And then another thing that we do in hospital is actually place them on IV fluids. And this is important to help flush everything through the system faster. And an interesting thing about chocolate, too, is um, the, the toxic components can actually be reabsorbed um, in the urine. And they're found in the urine and can be reabsorbed through the bladder wall. And so IV fluids help promote them to um, produce more dilute urine, urinate more, and then basically we, we take them on frequent walks outside to promote um, emptying of the bladder so they don't reabsorb more of the, the toxins. And then the third thing that's important to do in hospital is that we monitor for the onset of those moderate to severe clinical signs, which would involve hyperactivity, um, muscle tremors, high heart rate or high body temperature. And then at really high levels, we can get cardiac arrhythmias and seizures. And that's when we really start to worry can it potentially be life-threatening. And so we can, can intervene, can give medication, and help control if we see any of these clinical signs. Usually, if they're appropriately treated and uh, stabilized uh, within about 24 to 48 hours, then they're usually okay. Now, a lot of people call us and say, am I dog going to talk at home? Can I make them vomit? Meaning, can I give hydrogen peroxide? And that's actually not something that we recommend. Um, 
and that's because you actually have to force them to, to swallow the hydrogen peroxide, which dogs will fight you on. And if they were to inhale any of that into their lungs, they can get what's called aspiration pneumonia, which can be very serious and potentially even fatal. Um, people have asked me about getting activated charcoal at home, and for the same reasons, we don't recommend that. So I hope you enjoyed this talk and that you've learned a little bit more about chocolate toxicity in dogs. Please remember to keep all of your chocolate uh, treats in the house away from your pets. And if your dog were to get into chocolate, um, give us a call and bring them in as soon as possible.